In the United States and throughout the world, the bulk majority of our energy comes from fossil fuels, and though it's primarily responsible for advancing human progress and pulling many out of energy poverty, it's not without its drawbacks. Many are concerned with environmental repercussions, and while I believe advanced nuclear is the answer, many feel that these technologies are not being developed fast enough. Today I discuss some alternative solutions that can mitigate some of the negative ramifications of fossil fuel usage. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello again and welcome to Rock Logic. I'm your host Sean Kenny and before we get started I wanted to ask you to hit the like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now last week we discussed electric vehicles and the challenges and issues with providing enough electricity to replace every car that has an internal combustion engine with an electric motor. Though I feel it's a valid concern, it's not without a solution. Advanced, walk-away safe molten salt reactors, in my view, are the key to addressing all of these issues. But as discussed in previous episodes, there are serious regulatory hurdles that are slowing things down. And while many agree that nuclear has to be part of the solution, there is no denying that it may not get here fast enough to address many of the world's vital concerns. Renewables can play a part, but without suitable backup power solutions in place, they won't be able to step in for conventional energy production methods. This leaves us with fossil fuels. They certainly work, but have a lot of problems in regards to carbon emissions and pollution. Can this be mitigated in any way? The answer is yes, and the solution is carbon capture technology. Now, this is a broad term meant to describe any technology that can either sequester, utilize, or repurpose CO2 for commercial benefit. At the time of the recording of this episode, Elon Musk announced that he would be awarding a $100 million prize for the best carbon capture technology. No details have emerged as of yet. However, there are several well-funded companies as well as publicly funded initiatives that are looking to tackle this challenge. One said company is Carbon Engineering, based in British Columbia and financially backed by Bill Gates as well as several other public and private interests, this company has been developing what they refer to as direct air carbon capture technology. The concept works in two cycles. The first captures CO2 from the air using a device called an air contractor, which absorbs it into an alkaline hydroxide solution. Then, once it's captured into a liquid solution, it is regenerated and delivers pure CO2 as the end product. Now, these cycles work in tandem, producing a concentrated stream of CO2 output. Energy is used in such a way that no new CO2 emissions are incurred and thus do not counteract what was captured from the air. Now, the team at Carbon Engineering aren't blowing smoke. They actually have been testing out this concept in the field. In 2015, they built their first direct air capture plant in British Columbia, and in 2017, they incorporated fuel synthesis. They made their first air fuel synthetics just a few years ago. Based on data collected in the last few years of plant operations, they determined that CO2 can be captured at a cost between $94 and $233 per ton. The variation is based on energy costs, financial assumptions, and a choice of input and output assumptions. Of course, if one were to eventually pair this with cheap energy from a molten salt reactor, you might be able to bring those costs even lower. The next step is full commercialization. After partnering with Oxy Low Carbon Ventures, they plan on building a direct air capture facility in the Permian Basin of West Texas. Construction is planned to start this year, with the completion of the project expected sometime around 2023. Once completed, it will capture over 1 million tons of CO2 per year. To put that into perspective, that's the equivalent of taking emissions from over a quarter million cars off the road. Once captured, it will be used for enhanced oil recovery operations. The CO2 will remain sequestered underground while they resume normal operations. So that's one approach, but it isn't the only carbon capture project going on in Texas. A few years ago, a company called NetPower started its pilot project in Laporte, just outside of Houston. Using their patented alum cycle conversion, they burn natural gas and capture CO2. Then, under immense heat and oxygen, that supercritical CO2 is used to drive a Brayton cycle cycle turbine to power the plant. The facility is currently in operation generating electricity for thousands of homes with zero emissions. This project is fascinating to me and achieves some interesting results. It allows the use of natural gas with reduced impact on the environment. It treats CO2 as an asset rather than a liability, so there is a profit incentive for recycling carbon. And unlike most fossil fuel plants, this one has the potential to drive the market for Brayton cycle gas turbines. The reason that last one interests me is that companies like Flybe Energy plan to use these to power the lifter. Other companies such as Thorcon and Terrestrial Energy are planning 
planning on using steam turbines, seeing as there's already a supply chain to support them. But if these alum cycle gas plants catch on and drive a market for the technology prior to molten salt reactors going online in the States, we will see Brayton's readily available for these reactors to convert power in the most energy efficient way possible. From a policy perspective, it only gets better. Seeing as the oil and gas industry can see where the wind is blowing, they are more than willing to invest in various carbon capture technologies. A bipartisan bill sponsored by Senator John Cornyn and Chris Coons in the Senate and House members Henry Quayer and Solid Snake. I mean, Dan Crenshaw. Sorry. It's easy to get those two mixed up. Anyway, the purpose of the bill is to appropriate funds for the Department of Energy to go into research and development of advanced carbon capture technologies. So I'm a lot more optimistic knowing that these technologies are a lot more developed and further along. It's very likely that as many Western nations address climate concerns, that this tech will be at the forefront and become more mainstream. However, I must stress that though this technology does address many of the negative concerns with natural gas usage, it does nothing to deal with the supply. After all, natural gas, like many other fossil fuels, is a finite resource. And while this can act as a low or even carbon neutral solution, it's a short to medium term solution at best. But that doesn't mean that it has to be. Assuming positive regulatory changes can be made here in the United States to allow the adoption of molten salt reactor technology, we can start seeing the commercial rollout of these within a decade or so. Carbon capture technologies could serve as a bridge while the tech is certified and developed. Once the molten salt reactor becomes the primary energy solution of choice, we can do some interesting things. What are you doing, Doc? I need fuel. Sierra Energy is a company in Northern California that's been developing a machine called a Fast Ox Plasma Gasifier. Utilizing superheated steam and oxygen, the technology is intended to vaporize trash and municipal solid waste from landfills to make synthetic natural gas. This syngas could make liquid fuels or be distributed using existing infrastructure to nearby natural gas power plants to generate electricity and supplement existing gas reserves. Once this is adopted, we may be inclined to export our natural gas supplies to other countries. Right now, China and India burn coal and are considered the worst polluters on the planet, but a Department of Energy study concluded that by exporting cheap natural gas to these countries and encouraging them to replace coal burners with natural gas power plants, we can reduce their emissions by 43%. By exporting that along with newly developed carbon capture technology, we could reduce their emissions by 88%. So there you have it. It's not my favorite solution, but as the market continues to shift in this direction, it will buy us some time to develop other technologies like molten salt reactors. And once we do, we can work in tandem with existing plants as well as provide suitable backup power for intermittent renewables like wind and solar. I plan on doing an episode on that as well as cover additional carbon capture initiatives in future episodes. For now, I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic.